Hello, hello, hello. How are you guys doing today? Happy Daylight Savings Day. Will you say that? Happy Daylight Savings Time Day. Happy Daylight Savings Time Day. Also, Happy Academy Awards Day. And Happy Sunday the 10th of March. <laughs> it is currently 325, which in all reality is, I hear somebody walking down the street. It's actually 225. But with daylight savings time, it's 325. Oh, there's a little girl and she's riding her glider down the street and then her parents are down there. Hey, how are you? Um, I watched, oh my gosh, last night on, well, I watched a couple different things last night, but I watched, I think it was two episodes of Murder Under the Friday Night Lights. And the first one that I watched, it was so sad. It was about this little girl in Kentucky. Do you guys know this story? I've never heard of this story before. And it was at like a football game that they have like a, uh, a little league football league team game that they had like in November. I can't remember this, this was like 2015 or something like that. And they found her in the woods and she had like been murdered and stuff. The whole story was so sad. So I watched that one last night and then I watched another one. But before that, I watched The New Mean Girls. Because yesterday Alex and I were talking and I said there are some movies that I wanted to watch. I want to watch Wonka and I want to watch Mean Girls, the new Mean Girls. And I was like, and he said, oh, I really want to see Wonka. So I didn't think that he wanted to see Mean Girls. Apparently today I was like, oh, I watched uh, Mean Girls last night. He was like, oh, I thought we were going to watch that together. And I was like, well, you didn't act like you really wanted to see it. So anyway, I watched Mean Girls last night. And... Um, it was a struggle. It was a struggle. Uh, it is not great. And it, I was really surprised, honestly. I thought, I, mean, I knew it was a musical, um, so I was completely prepared for all the singing. I didn't realize, like Alex and I were talking about this at brunch today. Because I was like, well, there's a lot of musicals that I've seen through the years, like, you know, Sound of Music and things like that, that are musicals, but it's not, like, there's a lot of singing in Mean Girls. I would say probably, like, 80% of it is singing. Um, it's a lot. And I just, I didn't, I, to be honest with you, I didn't think it was cast very well at all. I thought, um, the girl that plays Katie was good. She was actually in... She was the stepdaughter to Jennifer Garner in The Last Thing He Told Me, the Apple series. She was good in it. Um, the actress that played Regina George, I wasn't real thrown down with her. The, the actress that played Gretchen Wieners, I thought was fantastic. The actress that played um, Karen, I, I thought she like played it over the top too much. Um, I just, like, the, the people that played um, Damien and Janice, I thought were fantastic. And they kind of, like, narrated and led the whole show. It just, it, it wasn't what I thought. It felt, it felt very short. Um, and honest to God, I, like, fast-forwarded through some of the songs, because some of the songs are really cheesy. The end of it is very cute, though. I will say the end of it is cute. It's interesting because it's supposed to be, like, not necessarily, like, a retelling, but kind of a retelling. But it's a musical version of Mean Girls. And uh, so it's basically the same story as the other one. And I think that's part of the problem is that you compare it. Like if you're watching it, well, at least I, I shouldn't say you. While I was watching it, I compared so much of it to the other movie. Like they even like say some of the iconic lines, you know, like when... Regina tells Katie to get in the car and she's like, get in, loser. There's like a lot of those like same lines that they use. It's not the exact same script, but there's a lot of it. Um, it's just, I don't know. It's just, it's very cheesy. It's very cheesy. I, I did not love it. I was actually kind of surprised because some of my friends really, really liked it. And um, so actually I started it and it starts off with Janice and Damien doing like a TikTok. And I got, like, halfway through the TikTok, and I was like, is this, like, whole thing? Like, in, like is it, like, a rock musical, you know? 
rock opera kind of thing, and I stopped it, and that's when I watched Murder on the Friday Night Lights, and then I, after I got done with those, I came back and I watched Mean Girls, because I was like, okay, well, I, I started it, so I might as well watch a little bit of it. And I was only planning on watching like 10 or 15 minutes of it and seeing what I thought, and then I ended up kind of like fast forwarding through some of the songs and watching it and stuff like that. The guy that they picked to play Aaron Samuels was like such a strange pick for me. Like, I don't know, has anybody else watched this movie? Did you have any of the same feelings for me? That's me. Like, I just, I don't know. I just thought, like, they skipped some really, the movie is an hour and 52 minutes long, right? Like, so it's longer than I think the original Mean Girls. And they skip some, like, very important parts to kind of, like, have the songs and stuff in there. Which, I like, I understand it's, it's the musical, right? That was on Broadway. And I get that. I'm not stupid. But, like, they skip out on a lot of, like, really, like, significant parts and um and then they like I think they try too hard to keep some of the like iconic lines in there and stuff like that I don't know I just really wasn't that impressed with it I, actually it wasn't even that I thought uh, that I wasn't impressed with it I thought it was it was bad I thought it was like that I mean like I would not recommend it to anybody like on a scale of one to five like I would give it like one and that's being generous I thought it was bad I thought it was really really bad who is texting me um, people are texting me about some new video that just came out. Uh, I'm not filming a drama video today. In fact, I actually wasn't going to film any videos today at all. And I know I say that a lot, but like I really wasn't. Um, I'm really, really tired. So last night I... Did we watch something? Oh, last night we went out to dinner for a friend's birthday. It was really, really fun. So I'll get to that in a second. And then we came home. And then as soon as we got home, Alex went to sleep. And so I was like, well, I was like looking at, oh, I was doing some laundry. And so I was on the basement. I was like, I'm not, like, it's the weekend. I'm not working on the basement this weekend and whatever. And then I started working on the basement. And I have like this, uh, like this bag of stuffed animals that like I had gone through. And I was like, they're old and whatever, right? Well, so the, the the rest of the basement that I have to do at this point, like everything is kind of like in sections. There's stuff that just needs to be like taken out of here and gone, which is interesting because when we pulled in today, um, after brunch, we just got back from brunch. When we pulled in here, I actually did not get the same thing today. Alex got um, the turkey chili because that's like, they keep it in season and they're about to get rid of it. So he gets the turkey chili, that's like his favorite, and then a bowl of that, and then he got the Cuban. And he, ate just a little bit of that and brought it home. I actually got the gluten-free waffle today. I was like craving a waffle today. So I got the gluten-free waffle and I didn't finish all of it. And we actually ran into a friend of mine, like a friend that I hadn't seen like in a really long time while we were there today. So anyway, um, so just got back from brunch. I did not, so like I said, I didn't sleep well last night. I, um, I think I ended up falling asleep at like, it was after like 10.30 this morning. I mean, I literally tossed and turned and tossed and turned and tossed and turned. And um, I really don't know why, um, but I really, really struggled. It wasn't like I was like, had anything like deeply on my mind or anything like that. So I, I, maybe I did, I don't know. Like I, last night, so anyway, last night I went down in the basement and um, the, the only part that I have left of my base or the basement to clean is really like all the emotional stuff, like the pictures, the DVDs, that which I mean those the, the DVDs and VHS tapes aren't really emotional, but like it's in that section over there. All my pictures, like all the memory stuff of, from my mom and I and growing up and exes and all that stuff, all of that I have to go through. So last night when I was, I sat down, like, so we have this like L-shaped couch in the basement. It's just covered with stuff, right? And then the table, a round table, and it's just like covered with stuff. Um, and that's what I have to go through. This is going to be like the heftiest part of the basement because it's literally like sifting through a note, a picture, you know, so it takes forever. Well, there was a box on top. So I started like moving stuff around on the couch. Like I was like, if I found a, a, like a VCR tape, I put it in the box of VCR tapes. I may have several of those, but so I started moving stuff around and I was getting some of the couch cleaned off and I was like, oh, I've got like a huge part of the couch cleaned off now. This is great because I can just sit down here, listen to my audiobook, and just start going through stuff. And so I had this like, t like box and it was like this like wood, wooden box, cardboard box. It was like this and I started going through stuff and I found like my elementary school yearbooks in there. 
a couple of them, and I found this literary magazine that I used to write for in college. I, th some of the things I had, like, I think they're things that, like, I've shown in, like, a video, or, like, I've read in a video, but at the very bottom of this box, well, first of all, I found my original birth certificate. I don't even know why it was in this box. This is the bottom of this box. It was a lot of my mom's stuff. It was, like, these wood print Christmas cards that my dad made when he and my mom were together and stuff. I mean, this was not a deep box. It was like a shallow box, like this shallow, right? And at the bottom of it, I found like my original birth certificate. I was like, oh my God, I can't, I can't believe, I mean, I have a copy, but I was like, I can't believe I have the original birth certificate. So I found that, but then I found this journal and um, the journal was from, my mom had given it to me and like Easter of 1993. So I got sober December 17th of 1994. So this is like a year, exactly like a year and a half before I got sober. And I only wrote in it a month. So this would have been like a, like a month and a half before my 21st birthday. Um, so I only wrote in it for like a month and a half. And uh, then I just kind of gave up on it. And then I came back I wrote on it from like March, like the middle of March, or the middle of April to the middle of May. No, till like June 1st or 2nd, I think. And then I stopped, and then I wrote one entry in like September. It was a real depressing entry, and then I just like stopped completely. So I made a cup of coffee last night, and I came upstairs, and um, I came out here to do like my prayers and meditations and stuff, and I was like, I wanna read through this journal. So I sat down here, and I read through this journal, and um, it really, I'm kind of doing this vlog kind of like out of order how I thought I was going to do it because what I was going to say at the beginning was um, that I wasn't going to make any videos today. I wasn't going to vlog, but then something happened. Well, I'll get to that in just a second. So that I felt like it was important for me to make this vlog today and talk about something and explain, explain it a little bit deeper and I wanted to clarif clarify some things. But then how I felt about it late last night and then when I woke up today, it completely kind of changed and it had a lot to do with like a lot of the comments that I got on the vlog last night and stuff like that. So I'll explain that in just a second. But, um, so I was sitting here and I was like reading, it's like the, the, going in between cloudy and being very sunny today. So I know that the lighting is like crazy right now. I don't know like what is going on here. I can tell like, it's like super sunny right there. Here, I'll show you. It's like super, super sunny. Can you see? It's beautiful outside. But then all of a sudden the clouds come over. Come on, focus and see how pretty it is. But then the clouds come over and then all of this becomes cloudy and then that's where like the sun goes down and stuff like that. Don't let the sun go down on me. So anyway, um, so I was reading this journal and in all honesty, I didn't like really think it would like bother. Oh, here comes my favorite neighbors walking down the street. You have your hood up over your head and everything. I know. Well, I'm just. I decided I wanted to talk to people today. It's cold, isn't it? Kinda. It's windy. It's very windy. I don't like it. I know. I heard it's gonna be nice. Well, stay warm. <laughs> um, I don't know okay so I didn't really expect to feel as emotional reading this journal as I did so here's the thing okay I have writ I wrote several journals when I was like in the middle of my using all the way through like you know high school and then after I graduated and moved out all that kind of stuff I have like journals here journals there or whatever right the majority of those I mean I never like kept a journal like going all the way through but I would like journal a little bit here journal a bit a little bit there most of them are like chicken scratch because I would write them like at, when I was drinking like late at night right and so <clears throat> many of them I threw out like years ago um and I, like when I mentioned that in vlogs, like people are, would say, I don't know why you like threw those out. And I kind of like questioned myself even like when I would say that, I'd be like, why did you throw those out? Like those would be like maybe like a good, like you can look back on them or whatever. After reading this journal last night, I totally understand why I threw them out. And in fact, like I thought about doing something with this journal, like sharing parts of it, like in a video or something, and then getting rid of it. Because it was really, 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 really hard for me to read. 
Um, I really didn't expect. I, I honestly thought I'd just be out here and be like, it would be some funny things that I didn't realize. Um, so this is a year and a half before I got sober. And I am like, so my mom gave me the journal because she gave it to me for Easter and she said on there, like, um, here's a journal to put your thoughts into. Sometimes it helps. That was like the, the inscription that she put, something like that. And so I started journaling like the day that she gave it to me. And um, it's like, okay, I had just gotten out of this relationship with this guy that was really like my first, first boyfriend. Like one that I don't really talk about over here because it was when I was like, 19, 20 years old. And so it's pretty like, well, one thing is very obvious, okay? That I just wanted to be loved so bad by anybody to be in a relationship. Like that just is, just bleeds from the pages. The codependency that I had of being in a relationship, which is something that I've worked on so hard in the last couple of years, but just my need to be in a relationship and constantly comparing my life to, this person has a boyfriend and I don't understand why nobody likes me and why am I not lovable and all. I mean, it was, it was constantly self-degrading. It was depressing to read. It was the tale of somebody that was unlovable. It's really what it was. And then on top of that, it's like when I'm reading the journal entries, they either like halfway through become very, very drunk or I would stop it and then I would write like three, four o'clock in the morning, five o'clock in the morning and I would add to it. And I would, the first thing I would say is like I'm wasted or I'm drunk or I just ate a bunch of pills or I just did this or whatever and la, 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 whatever. And, um... In between there, threaded in there, was me, I, like, getting off probation. I could not believe that all of this was in, like, this is, like, literally two months of my life when I was, like, 20 years old. Getting off probation, <clears throat> getting off of this treatment program, telling myself at 20 years old that I knew that drugs and alcohol were a problem. I didn't say it like that, but I was like, this is such a problem. Like, I can't continue to go on and live like this. Everybody's mad at me all the time. Blah, 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 whatever. Tomorrow, I'm not gonna ever drink again, blah, blah, blah. And then the next night, I would be wasted drunk. And then it would be like, oh, like it would skip a day and it would be like, oh, I've been sober for two days. I haven't had a drink in two days. I'm so proud of myself. I haven't smoked any, you know, pot. I haven't t t eaten any pills or done anything like that. And then it was like, and then it would go, like, the next one would be, like, I mean, it's literally the telling of, like, an alcoholic, like, building his story, you know? And then my childhood dog dies in there. I went over, I've shared that story before where I went over there, and my mom told me about that. Just my response to, like, anything that happened to me was so muted, and um, <coughs> I think... Sitting where I'm sitting now, at 29 years sober, and looking back at who I was then, with this awareness that I had an issue, but this unwillingness to do anything about it. And also knowing, like, that it was, my life was just, like, so dark and troubled, but I couldn't, I was so scared to stop. Like, that's kind of even said in there. I'll say things, like, in the journal, like, drunk. Like, I know I can't drink anymore, but that scares me. I don't know what my life will look like. I mean, that's, like, in there. And I'm reading this last night, and I really just thought it'd be like, oh, like, so-and-so and I went to this party, or so-and-so and I went here. And that is there. Like, that's in there as well. But it is so dark. I mean, it was so funny because there were parts of it, like, I was talking about 30-something the other night. I did a cameo to somebody that turned 30, and I've talked about it over here and stuff, you know. And I was, like, in there, I was like, it says something like, Nancy and Elliot, I'm watching 30-something, Nancy and Elliot broke up. I just went into the kitchen and made a... Another vodka. I'm down to drinking just vodka alone, blah, 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 which is so crazy because I can remember when I specifically switched over from vodka to Jack Daniels, and I can remember when that happened, and, like, this part is, like, I'm drinking, like, massive amounts of vodka, and I'm 20 years old. I'm not even 21 yet. And it's just, it's, it's sad, and it's just gross, and, um... You know, I know a lot of people would probably say, well, that would be good to, like, keep and, and look back on... I don't know that I, you know, I've always said, like, I'm really grateful that nobody ever took video of me and stuff like that when I was using, and that I don't have, like, footage of that. 
Because I know a lot of people that got sober today that have like videos, like, you know, phone videos and stuff that people took of them while they were using. And that's like really hard for them to look at. Um, I, I'm grateful that that's not out there. Reading the journal was like even worse than that because it was like seen into my mind. Um, the one thing that it did do and the one reason why I probably would think about keeping them is if there was ever a question of whether or not I was an alcoholic or if it was just a period of my life and could I go back to it and could I not, this two months of my life before I turned 21 is 100% factual evidence of, from my own mouth, like writing it, that I had an absolute horrific addiction to alcohol um, and other substances and how it affected my life negatively. I mean, it talks in there about how this guy broke up with me because, and I was so in love with him. It's so funny because, like, I never even think of him anymore. He's actually the one that, well, so his friend, um, who, well, his best friend, who is also one of my friends, who ended up taking his life, in these two journals, that friend of mine used to call me all the time and say that, like, oh, this is my last day and whatever. And there was, like, a moment in there where, like, I'd gotten off the phone with him. And it's actually, I'm sober in that moment, which is strange. And, like, he's called me on the phone, and I've, like, literally talked him down. And, like, that's in the journal, which is so strange now, thinking, like, he's passed away. And, but at his funeral was when I made amends to this guy that, that was years later. Um, I don't know, it was just, it was, it was really hard to read that. So, so Yeah. And then I was kind of like, I'm done with the basement. Like, I've done enough. Like, I've done a lot on that basement this week. And so I came up here, and that's when I started watching stuff. But I was reading, so let's get into this. So I was reading these comments on my vlog. Now, I knew I said yesterday that I wasn't going to talk about this. I actually wrote some notes about this, because I kind of want to make sure that I say everything that I want to say. Um, I know I said I wasn't going to talk about this anymore. Um, but I feel like I've lit this fire, and I, I need to, like, put it out. Um... So let me explain to you what I'm talking about. I'm talking about like the negative comment situation and I'm just gonna kind of explain things to you guys from my point of view. And then here's the thing. Okay, first of all, if anybody feels pers personally attacked, unwarranted, and what I mean by unwarranted is like you are not somebody that has negative feelings towards me or whatever and like you just feel like you got caught, you know, up and all that. Like I, I genuinely apologize to you. Um, You know, I put this video out on my Peter Mon channel, and I talked about, like, I was done dealing with it, and, you know, kind of very much like I know my self-worth kind of video. And I do feel that way. I do. Um, and when people say to me things, like, in the comment sections, like, when you bring attention to this, you're giving power to the haters. And I know all that. Hell, I've known that since first grade. You know, I've known that since I was bullied in first grade. I know that, right? Um, I'm trying real hard. I I'm really doing my best to deal with this the best way possible. You guys, I literally have so many notes about this because um, I wanted to make sure that I say it the way that I wanted to say it. Um, but like, okay, so I'm a work in progress. You know, like I'm learning as I go. I don't want to come on here and address negative comments and I don't want anybody to feel like they're unsafe to leave a comment. People that are genuinely enjoy watching my videos. I'm speaking to the people out there that genuinely enjoy watching my videos and are entertained by this and like me telling stories and enjoy me sharing about my sobriety and enjoy share me sharing about my mom or Alex and I or whatever. I'm talking to you out there. If I've said something that has made you offended in some way, or felt attacked, or felt uncomfortable or unsafe or whatever, or doesn't you don't feel comfortable leaving a comment, I'm really, really sorry. Okay, that was not my intention, and and I can understand when people say things like, "Well, when you say you, I feel like you're you're saying that to me." I totally understand that, which is why I try to say in videos when I'll say like you, I'll say, "Oh no, my experience." Like I try to correct myself, right? Um. You know, I think more, and I watch, you know, a lot of YouTubers and cover a lot of YouTubers. I try to do my best to be thankful of the audience that I have. And I think I do a pretty good job of that, in all honesty. Um, and I think I do highlight a lot of positive that I get over here. Um, 
You know, it's interesting whenever I like read a bunch of comments, people will say like, oh, like he read my comment. I'm so excited about that, right? But um, it's very rare that like I'll get comments where people will be like, oh, Peter shouts out a lot of his, you know, followers or Peter reads a lot of comments and responds to, I don't know a lot of other YouTubers that do that, right? But I do that like at least a couple of weeks. But the second that I start talking about negativity that I receive, it's like, you're, you're not allowed to do that. You can't talk about the negativity. And that's what I was talking about yesterday, right? Um, so I understand, like, I, so this is what happened. So last night, I was reading the comments on the vlog as I was getting ready to watch some TV. And I started noticing that the comments were not good. That there were a couple comments. I wouldn't say they weren't good. I don't mean they were negative. I just mean people felt a certain way about it. And it was people that have watched me for a long time. And people that felt like this was a safe space. And one person said <clears throat> something to the effect of that they didn't feel like they were comfortable. And I'm not picking, and when I say this, I'm just referencing you because I want to I want to explain this. Not because I'm picking you out, not because I feel a certain way about your comment. Because these comments were very, very genuine, okay? But somebody said that they didn't feel comfortable leaving a comment over here anymore out of fear of being blocked or whatever. And another person said that they basic they're like they didn't like the fact that they felt like i said that i was like setting up a trap for people on my channel okay so let me go in here and kind of explain this a little bit because i want people to see it from my point of view okay and then i am fully aware that me bringing attention to this and talking about it is exactly what the haters love I know that. You're 100% right when you say that. And when I say you in this, it's because the majority of you out there have said this, okay? So, after this video, I am going to do my best. I don't care what comments I get in the comment section. I'm going to do my best to leave it in today and move forward, okay? The problem is that I said this in my video yesterday. You know, when we, when we watch videos or we watch TV or we listen to songs, we pick and choose what we hear, right? And it was interesting that there were people out there that felt like it was personal to them, but then they didn't hear my story of how I had like basically suffered in silence for a long time, you know, and that I wasn't able to, I didn't feel like I was able to share those things because people didn't want to hear it. And when I said that in my video yesterday, it was obvious people don't want to hear it. People don't want to hear me talk about the negativity that I receive as a result of being on YouTube. And I get that, right? And here's the thing, right? If I say it, and there were a lot of people in the comment sections. This so so when I last night I was like, okay, I'm just gonna get on a video, and I'm just gonna address it, which is when I took these notes. And I was like, I'm just gonna get on video and I'm gonna explain my stance, and maybe it'll help people understand. I don't want anybody to feel like I am like, like I literally can say things like blatantly, like it takes a lot to get blocked on my channel, and then people say I'm worried about getting blocked on my channel. Well, if you haven't left tons of negative comments and you're not leaving comments other places and you're not dragging my mother, my sobriety, my addiction and other places, you all really don't have anything to worry about. I, I've, I have explained on here that it, it takes a lot to get blocked. I mean, so when I said yesterday that I was looking for people to trip up, what I was saying was that there have been a couple people that I have been kind of unsure of that have left comments on my videos, right? Or that what happens is whenever I address the negativity, the people that hate me, they just cannot not say something, right? It's like, it's, it's honey to the bee. Like they have to say something, right? It's like everything starts popping off. So it's not like when I said, are you a faith warrior, you're a traitor? That was kind of a joke. In all honesty, that was like complete sarcasm. I wasn't, like somebody took it seriously and said, why does it have to be one or the other? That was complete sarcasm, right? And, and then, then again, I feel like, well, people can joke in the comment sections and I'm supposed to take that, but I can't make a joke in a vlog, right? And I, and I don't know what to do with that. And so I'm just going to have to not worry about it anymore. And what I say is what I say. And if people are offended about it, then I guess, you know, you're offended by it. And if you're not, you love it, you love it, right? But here's the deal. So there have been a couple people that I am just not really, like, they don't seem very happy over here, okay? But every comment that they leave is consistently negative. And I'm talking about, like, coming for me negative, right? 
but I don't block them because they've watched for a long time. But then I'm sent screenshots of, and I know who they are. I mean, I know who they are behind their fake profile pictures and some of them have real names on their profile pictures. So, because I've been sent this stuff and I've been asked not to be sent this stuff, right? Um, but like whenever I talk about getting negativity or people coming for me, that's when they come out and say something. They, they just can't not, right? That's what I was talking about in my video, tripping them up. It wasn't, I'm trying to look in all of the comments for the regular viewers. I'm not, look, I'm not worried about that. There's three or four people out there that I'm just not sure of. It's those three or four people that I was talking about. And if you're not on threads and other places and on Twitter coming for me and things like that, like for example, like let me just give you an example, okay, because this was sent to me. So in this, the battery stopped. So on this long thread that this, um, this person left this comment and they said something to the effect of um, some comment that I had said, they, they felt like they were offended, they felt like I was reading their comment or whatever. So this person put on the comment, stand up for yourself, like Peter always seems to want to. This is what I'm talking about, is when they hide in the comments and they, like want to, co remember when I said coerce the narrative yesterday? Okay, stand up for yourself like Peter, and this was sent to me today. Like I said, I, I asked not to be sent this stuff anymore, but this was sent to me today. They said, I just want you to see what this person is saying about you other places. Stand up for yourself like Peter always seems to want to. You speak for an increasing amount of X subscribers. And then it was sent to me at this person said on another video, bingo card ready. Sobriety, his mom, stalking, all about him. So, Apparently, this person is offended that I talk about my sobriety, my mom. You're an ex-subscriber because I talk about my sobriety, about my mom, about my... This is my vlog. Go start a vlog channel and talk about yourself on your own vlog channel. So, that's what I'm talking about, right? Why would I want people that are in my comment sections and they're like, oh, I love you so much, blah, 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 whatever, right? And then there are other places and they're dogging me. And I'm not just talking about an opinion that I have, okay? They're saying things like the accident which had a police investigation that found that it was a medical emergency, okay? They're actually defaming me by saying that um, it is um, distracted driving. That's defamatory, just so you know. I mean, I could take legal recourse if I wanted to. There's been a police investigation. They're saying that um, I'm, using the, I'm using the story of talking to the family of the victim in the accident to make it about myself and garner sympathy for views. I literally shared that and even asked his mother, I was like, do you mind if I share this in video? Because, and this is what I said, people constantly ask me in vlogs, why don't you reach out to the family? Fact check that in the comment section for me below. Has people asked me, and I've even said in there, the reason why I haven't reached out to them, that was why I brought it forward. But I say it in a video, and I'm using it for views. Oh, but wait, then they turn around and they say, I never really talked to his mother at all, that I made the whole thing up, that it was all a lie. What do I have to gain from that, right? That I talk about my mom, that I need to just get over my mom being dead that I'm not really in marriage counseling, that I'm not really in individual counseling, that I actually don't even have a therapist, that I'm not sober, that I'm not, I don't have a sponsor, that I make all of it up, that this is constant, right? Why would I want those people in the comment sections of my vlogs? So if I'm trying, if, if, if what I'm being accused of is that people feel uncomfortable to leave comments because they feel like when I say I'm trying to trip people up, that they're going to get blocked. If you're doing those things in other places and you're worried about getting tripped up on my channel, you should be worried about it because you will be blocked if I see you in other places. But I'm not going to look for it anymore. I haven't looked for it for a long time. The people send me constantly, they think that I'm over places reading stuff. Trust me, okay? If you think that I cannot handle one or two comments on my vlog, do you think that I can read pages of people hating me? Do you think I can handle that? Trust me, I'm not over there, okay? I haven't been for a very, very long time. And my close friends that go over there to check to make sure that there's anything that I ever need to know, and no, not Tanya Jean and people like that, okay? But like, that in case anything that I need to address ever comes up, 
Okay, I'm like, don't, I don't want to know anything that's going on over there. Don't, don't send it to me. Don't bring, people keep wanting to send it to me. Just wanted you to know, I got it this morning. Just wanted you to know this person that commented on in your vlog. It, it might even be them. They might even be bringing attention to me as an anonymous email, you know, or whatever. Uh, and so, you know, people send this stuff to me all the time in DMs and emails and whatever. So, yeah, I'm going to go in and I'm going to block that person. Why would I want somebody commenting on my video saying, hey, you're, what did they say? You're, you're starting to see it like a lot of us ex-subscribers. Well, why don't you ex-subscribers come out and tell me what I did that was so wrong? You know, people always want to throw up in my face that I'm just like, like, because I talk about people on my drama channel, right? That what, they're like, oh, well, we're no different than you. Well, first of all, you, sh you hide your face. You hide your name. I don't. I get on my full face, full picture, full name. Everybody knows where I live in Indianapolis, Indiana, all that kind of stuff, right? And I talk about everybody I talk about on my drama channel. If any of those people, okay, if Shane Dawson, Jeffree Star, Trisha Paytas, Raw Beauty Christie, Toddy Westbrook, James Charles, you know, who else? Nikita Dragon, uh, any of the people that I've ever talked about on my drama channel, if any of them ever reached out to me and said, I would like to know exactly what it is that I did that makes you think the way that I think or why it makes you think of me as a lesser person and what can I do to maybe change that opinion? I would in a second have an adult conversation with them. I don't have a problem. I don't have to hide, okay, behind some fakety fakety ass picture and make fun of somebody, okay? And I also know that some people out there, the only attention they have ever gotten, ever, okay, is from me coming for them and they are so wanting me to do that again and that will never happen. So, no, I understand that it would be a lot easier for you to tell me exactly why it is you hate me. And then that takes me all the way back, not you, not the 99% over here, okay, but the few people that do. It takes me all the way back to kindergarten and first grade where the whole class hates me and I'm being bullied, but I don't know why and I can't figure it out, right? So the haters go to is just get over it. You were five or six, you're 51 now. Well, we talk about foundation years, okay? And that was how my foundation was built. My foundation was built on hate and fear. And so here I am 45 years later and I don't know where it's coming from. It'd be a lot easier if somebody just come out and say to me, I hate you because you talked this way about somebody that I love. I get that, right? I, I hate you because of this, but you hate me because I talk about my mom and my sobriety too much, bingo card. Bingo card. Oh, he's going to talk about his mom. Bingo card. He's going to talk about his sobriety. Bingo card. Do you know how many comments I get from people regularly that say thank you so much about talking about your sobriety? I just got him on this, this video today. When you talk about your sobriety, it inspires me. Whatever. You're using that against me? How sick are you? How sick of a person are you that you're using my sobriety and the grief of my mother over me? But you're encouraging people on my own vlog to become ex-subscribers and stand up for themselves. You, you think I shouldn't take issue with that and that I shouldn't talk about that. Wait a second, let's read this again, okay? People wanna feel like they're getting called out. Sure, shit, you're gonna get called out, right? You're gonna say shit about me on other channels? I have this woman, I'm gonna tell you, she has followed me for five or six years over here, okay? Leaves comments, blue hearts, I love you so much. I had somebody send me a thread of things that this person said about me with her picture and her name on there, okay? And then she was like, they sent me that she was surprised that she got blocked. And I'm like, why is she surprised that she got blocked? Oh, because she thinks I don't see those things. Well, I ain't looking for them. I'm not seeking them out. Listen, I care a lot about this vlog. This vlog means a lot to me, all right? But if you don't like me because bingo card, I'm talking about my mom or the stalking, it's all about him. Yeah, this is called Peter's Vlogs. Who do you think I'm talking about? Fucking Judy Smith over here? I'm talking about my life, all right? You have people try to infiltrate your life the way that I have. Tell me I can't talk about it. I can't talk about being stalked. Can't talk about my mother. Can't talk about my sobriety. <laughs> But if I don't talk about those things, then I'm talking about other people. Then they don't like that either, right? So there's nothing I can do. Why do you watch me? You literally are on somebody else's thing talking about me, how much you dislike me. And then you're over here encouraging my subscribers and you're saying stand up for yourself like Peter always seems to want to. You speak for an increasing amount of ex-subscribers. Ex-subscribers for what? Because I talk too much about my mom? 
because I talk too much about my, and, and then this is what they'll go to. Oh, Peter called out somebody today. Then they get real offended, right? Like I called them out. Oh, I called, I called this person out. Oh, Peter can't handle it. He called them out. That's what they'll be writing next, right? So what am I supposed to do? This is the manipulation that I have dealt with my entire life by bullies, okay? That if you call it out, if you don't call it out and you stay silent, like is what I'm told to do. Don't, don't give them any attention because they want the attention. So you stand over here and you suffer in silence, okay? And then they continue to do it. And then it gets worse. And then it gets worse because it starts with saying things like, oh, he's fat. Then, and then they're taking a picture of your gut and they're throwing it up there, right? Or they're making, a, they're making a joke about a review that you're doing, right? But you stay silent and then it goes worse. But the worst is when you finally do stand up for yourself, like this person's saying, what do these people do? They come for you harder. Then what they do is they realize the fat comments don't get to you. So what do they go for? They go for things that they know that are going to really get you because they know it's not true. The accident, right? You don't deserve forgiveness for this. Oh, he's making it up. He never really talked to the family. Do you know how sick that is? That you would even imply that? That I would make something like that up? You think I'm that horrific of a person? What did I... I would love to know what I did to you that you think I am that much that I sit here on my front porch scheming and coming up with these lies. And then people want to know why I let the negativity affect me. Are you kidding me? Do you have any idea what I've lived through for the last two years to have then people come through and say that I'm making shit up about this? When people are saying to me, you should, do, I'm getting in a video, I'm talking about how much I'm struggling. People are like, oh, you should reach out to the family. And I have this amazing opportunity where I get to have that in my life. And then I'm accused of lying and making it up. What did I do that you hate me so bad? Just tell me that. Who did I talk to? Who did I talk about that you, that you hate me so bad? Oh, it's you've seen the truth? You've seen the truth of my lies? What lies? Because I said one thing in one video and something else over here in another video because I got something wrong or I, I, I didn't remember something correctly? You hate me so bad for what? What did I do? Okay? I don't believe in hate watching. So yeah, so if somebody's gonna come over here and they're gonna send me that stuff and I see who it is, if I don't know who they are and they're over there kissing my ass and I'm not, like I, like I said, I'm not looking for it, but if somebody's gonna send it to me, sure as shit, I'm gonna block them. Sure as shit. You know? Like this person over here. They're encouraging people to stand up for themselves on my channel against me. And they're on another thing over there, another platform Coming from me, why would I not be upset about that? So no, this is not about the average watcher over here that watches my videos. I'm not trying to trip anybody up. I'm not setting traps, okay? Trying to get people to fall into it. I don't like talking about this, you guys. I really don't. It wears me out. I'm gonna just read from my notes and tell you guys what I have. Like I wasn't gonna, I wasn't gonna even vlog today, but I feel like I've started a fire and I can't put it out. I wanna help people see it from my point of view. I apologize to anyone who felt personally attacked. I really, really do. I'm not someone to not address things, which is why I'm addressing this. And this is all I know how to do is to get on video and talk about it. This is what I always do, right? Right or wrong, you know? Um, and like I said, I'm only dealing with this to, or I'm only filming this to deal with this once and for all. I'm done talking about it. Because what I do know is this, is that if I don't look at it and I and I don't address it, they'll keep talking about me. And you're right, there's nothing I, there's nothing I can do about it. Okay, I can't stop it. I can't change it. Or whatever it is, what it is. If they're gonna talk about me, they're gonna talk about me. I could fight it. I could do this. I could try to find out every person. It becomes consuming. That's where I was four or five months ago. I'm not there anymore, okay? But like I said, I'm a work in progress. I'm trying to do the best I can, all right? I don't want it brought to my attention. In fact, to be honest with you, I don't even care if they're in the comment sections, just leaving comments, kissing my ass or not kissing my, like, people are like, I feel like this has turned into a place that you, you have to kiss Peter's ass to be over here. When have I ever said that? There are people that disagree with me all the time on all my channels. And I'll be honest with you, like, I don't really address this on my other channels because I don't really care. This is a really personal place for me where I'm sharing very personal stories in my life. Very personal stories in my life. If you're getting criticized about your opinion on Jeffree Star, that's one thing. If you're being criticized because people are saying that you're not really sober, or you're not really in therapy, or you're not really dealing appropriately with a traumatic experience in your life, where somebody lost their life, 
And people are using those things against you. They're weaponizing those things against you. That's sick. You're a really sick person to even put that out there in the universe. I wouldn't even put my fake name against that. The fact that you do, that's sick. Okay? And then encourage other people to not follow me. Over what? That I talk about my mom or my sobriety? That's what you have an issue with? You're a sick person. So I address it and it gets worse. I don't address it and it gets worse. So what do I do? I don't know. I address it and then like you guys say, they love that. It's attention they want. I know that, right? But if I don't address it, then I see it come up and I deal with it in silence. So I guess what I'm just gonna do is, if it just comes up, I'll just block them. And like I said, it takes a lot to get blocked over my channel, okay? It's not like, I can, I can tell who the people are and who they aren't, all right? Cause they just, it's, it's most of the people that are leaving comments over there. Unless it's brought to my attention, like the one woman, I was really surprised by her. She was somebody that sent me DMs and all kinds of stuff, right? And then all of a sudden I'm shot all these, these DMs. I don't go look for it. I know people think I do, but I don't. Trust me. If you think I can't handle a couple comments, like I said, do you think I can just sit there and read about myself all day? No, I cannot do it. I just can't. Um, it's too much. So going forward, I am just not going to address it. I'm going to do my best I can. I mean, in all honesty, like, I, I, I hope to God I'm not turning around tomorrow. Whatever comments are left on this vlog today, they're going to be, you know, whatever. They're going to be said. Whatever anybody has a feeling about this, what they're going to be saying. The reason I'm making this video is solely to the people out there that feel like they cannot leave comments unless they're kissing my ass because they're afraid that they're going to get blocked or they don't feel safe to leave comments anymore, whatever. I do not want you to feel that way, okay? I love this channel. I have vlogged on this channel for seven years and two months, 28 days a month, okay? I have taken very little time off from this channel and posted consistently. This is my eighth year of vlogging. I love this. Do you think I would vlog for 45 minutes to an hour every single day to just set up traps to come and hate people? I don't do, that's not why I do this. I literally have vlogged over here and shared my life with people for seven full years and now two months, you know? I don't make, this isn't like a channel that's booming me income. It's not like I'm making tons of money off this channel. Trust me, okay? It's, it's just, in all honesty, it's not worth the time I put into it. So I do it because I love to do this. I love to connect with you guys. I don't want to talk about the negative. I don't want anybody to feel like I'm setting up traps. When I said that in my video, it was because I knew that I had just talked about this and I was pissed about the person. I love that somebody responded to them and said, did you say this thing to them? And they go, no, that was somebody else. No, it wasn't, it was you. It doesn't matter because those people have been blocked from my channel anyway now, right? Um. But I'm coming on here to address it because this is the only thing I, I know how to do and I don't want anybody to feel unsafe over here that, if that enjoys watching this channel. Um, like I said, I'm only, dealing, I'm only filming this to deal with this once and for all. I don't want people who enjoy being here to be uncomfortable and not enjoy these vlogs. And I said, I read some of these comments and I feel like I need to address this. I'm doing my best to deal with the negativity. I really am. This is a very real thing for me, you guys, okay? I get it. Um, I'm doing my best to move on from it. I'm not setting a trap to see just whoever falls into it. It's a few people that in all honesty, I don't, I mean, I feel like I should just say their names on here and just be like, it's you, you, and you. Do you like me or do you not like me? Because like, I don't know by what you say. That's kind of where I'm at with it if you want to be honest with you. And, and, and I can tell you, it's people that, just so you know, like when people are like, well, is he setting a trap? What is it? It's people that have consistently left negative comments. It's not like a negative, positive, negative, two positives, two negative. It's all negative, okay? And then I've seen that they've said things other places as well, consistently. So if you're not doing that, it ain't you, okay? <laughs> don't wear it if it don't fit, is what I'm saying, right? Um, like I said, I have a few people that have left questionable comments, hurtful com They've left hurtful comments over here, right? Um... I have made it clear that it's extremely, I just said this in a vlog not too long ago, it's extremely difficult to get blocked by me. I don't like to block people at all, right? And you know, it's interesting because I, like, somebody threw in my face and they said something about, like, this person and that person, this person, like, throwing up in my face people I cover on my drama channel. I'm like, oh, people that have, like, literally had Reddit threads taken down? 
and, and delete every comment that comes up that doesn't agree on their channel or blocks everything. That's who you're using as examples. Like, well, why don't you act like them? They deal with the, that's how they deal with the hate. I've never gone to those lengths. I could start just blocking anybody that leaves me a negative comment. I don't do that at all. I, I can do that, but I don't want to. Like, I, I don't want that to be the place that this is, you know? This channel is really important to me and I want people to feel comfortable sharing what they need in the comment section. But I am not allowed to address it, apparently, if it upsets me. I guess is what some people are saying out there. Now, I will say today I got up and there was a lot of support. People were like, oh no, Peter, you talk about what you need to talk about. I appreciate you talking about the negativity, you know? Um, if I address it, I'm accused of yelling at people. And I never give credit to the people that leave nice comments. When I literally, like every two to three weeks, read people's comments... <laughs> over on this channel regularly, right? Okay, but but when I address the negative comments, I'm yelling at people, and I and what they say is, and you never respond to the positive. Okay. This is not a witch hunt, but understand that some people that are out there are commenting, that are also commenting in other places and saying very negative, negative defamatory, hurtful statements about me. Okay, I just want to make that clear. Like about my accident, my marriage, my sobriety, my grieving, anybody in my life, my therapy, on and on and on, saying that I made things up, saying that I'm lying, painting a very negative picture of me that is not has no basis in truth whatsoever. It's just mind blown when I see these things, right? I'm like, people will send me these things and I'm like, where do they come up with this? Like literally, Peter is lying, he is not sober. Okay, now you have to remember, people put out tweets like two years ago. I had people calling me up, friends of mine being like, Did, did the police just come to your door? Are you really going to therapy? Like, this is very... Are you really going to treatment? Are you entering treatment? Please, people put those things out there. That was a real thing that happened, you guys. People took that seriously. This isn't just a joke. So when you question that stuff, you're questioning my integrity. You're questioning my reputation as a sober person. That's very serious to me, okay? So when I say this on video, that's what they'll come harder for. They'll come harder for the accident. They'll come harder for the sobriety. Because you're talking about really sick people that need very professional help. Okay? That live online and are consumed with this stuff. Th they say I'm consumed with the negativity and that I address it. But they're on multiple sites with multiple accounts coming for me all day long. Who's consumed with who, right? And I don't really know what to do with it. But this is very personal and this is my life, right? Right? Um, this is not me talking about somebody releasing a lipstick. Maybe that's what it's about to you and that's what pissed you off so much to begin with. I don't know why. Or maybe it's I didn't respond to one of your DMs. Or maybe it's I didn't give you a birthday shout out when you asked me for one in a comment section because I didn't see it that day. I don't know what it is that I did to piss you off so bad that you say you used to love me but you saw the light. You saw the light about what? What was it that you saw the light about? That I'm such a liar? What was it that I lied about? I, somebody please explain this to me. Okay. It would be easier if they just came out and said, I hate Peter because I love this person. Or he pissed me off when he did this or when he did that. That's why. Okay? But they hide. They won't come out and say that to me directly. No. And so I can't figure it out. So it takes me all the way back to, you know, whenever again. It makes me feel a certain way with them. Like I said, I would have an conver adult conversation with anybody that reached out to me that wanted me to ask me, you know? Uh, I mean, if any of those people that I talked about reached out to me tomorrow and said, I'd like to have an adult conversation with you on the phone. Can we talk about this? Like, I don't understand where this is coming from. I say, absolutely, I have no problem with you. And it's not personal. But to these people, it's very personal, right? Um, so, I don't really know what to do about it anymore. And this is just me being honest, I guess. Just hate me if you don't like me, right? And if you like being here, that means the world to me. And I appreciate you being here. So, thank you so much for staying. Um, I don't really know what to do with it going forward, you know? I don't know if I... I feel like now it's kind of like this indirect threat because there were a couple comments from people that I know that are just genuine and nice that were like, I don't, like, I feel like uncomfortable, like, leaving a comment now. And I get it. Like, I would feel the same way you did, right? And then there were other people that were like, Peter, talk about it whenever you want. I don't want to talk about it. It's just, it's nauseating to me and I'm tired of talking about it. It's too much, right? But then there are other people that, like, I know because I 
have people send me things that are like, see, Peter will block anybody that says anything negative about him. Stand up for yourself. And I'm like, you're literally one of the people that is one of my biggest haters painting a narrative about me that is untrue on my channel. And I can't stand up for myself because if I stand up for myself, what you've already said in your comment is, and block me. I already know you're going to. So when I block you, people are going to see that and be like, oh, Peter blocked him. So what they're saying is true. But I already know that you're one of my biggest haters because I've cross-referenced you other places. So I can't win, right? Like, I literally can't win. I cannot. You, you, ref you are literally the elementary school bully that refuses to allow me to stand up for myself. It's literally what you are. And I know they're getting such a laugh over that and there will be entire posts and videos and all kinds of stuff made over that, right? I don't know what to do with that. I think... Let people say what they want to say in the comment section about me. If I realize that there's somebody that doesn't like me, I'm just going to block them. I mean, if I know from other places, okay? Not just by a comment that you leave on my vlog. If, you, if I see that you're, if people have sent me stuff and I, and I recognize your name, I'm just going to block you, period, okay? But, I mean, I look into that stuff. So, I don't want anybody to be worried about it, all right? Like I said, it takes a lot for a comment to get deleted or for you to be blocked over here. All right? Um, and I'm just coming on here to clear that up because I don't want anybody to feel like they can't watch it. I'm not talking about this anymore. I'm done talking about it. I'm bored of talking about it. Okay? And I'm sure you guys are bored of listening to it. Um, I really, really, really appreciate you guys watching for seven years. I love this channel. This channel's my heart stone. I probably wouldn't continue to talk about this so much if this didn't mean so much to me and I want you guys to know it. And what I mean about this is you watching me sit here and talk, okay? It's a two-sided relationship here. And I don't want anybody to feel uncomfortable or unsafe watching it. The, the first comment that I read where somebody said, wow, like you said, like that really hurt. Because I knew that that was somebody that had watched my videos for a long time. And I didn't want anybody to feel that way. That was never my intention. And when I said that, I was really in that. And when I was saying you, like, I'm really speaking to, like, specifically three or four people. And if it ever came across any differently than that, then I greatly apologize. And I know it did. I greatly apologize to everybody else there out there watching. Um, I think for... Um, Just to put this in perspective, I don't know why I wrote this down, but like when my friend Nikki came to pick me up when she drove here to Indianapolis and we flew to Arizona last year, I'll never forget when she came to the driveway, I like looked at her and said something because she was coming inside and I was showing her the house and stuff. And I said, you could be my biggest hater and I wouldn't even know it, you know? Like that's kind of weird. And we both laughed about it, right? But she could have been. She could be, right? Like <clears throat> I met her online. I know she's not. I love Nikki, right? But that's the kind of fear that I've lived with for like the last seven years. Sure, like, I love making videos. I'm not going to let anybody take that from me. Um, I wish I knew the answers to how to deal with all this. I really wish I did, you know? I wish I, I knew, do this or don't do that, you know? When you go to, like, cyber harassment or cyber bullying sites and you read what they say, that they say block the people immediately, right? Or just ignore them, block them, report them. Um... So, I guess the best thing for me to do is, there was a period for a very long time when I just didn't, like, I just didn't pay it any attention. Like, if a comment came up, I just read past it, let it go, read past it, let it go. That was probably the healthiest time for me on YouTube. It was a very long period of my life. It was... After the accident, when people started really questioning things like that, and and you have to understand the mindset that I was in going through that and how much guilt I felt, how much remorse. And then I had people out there that didn't like me that were questioning all that and putting that in my head, you know? And at the same time, you know, I had this huge police investigation going on that was terrifying to me, you know? It was terrifying to me. Mm -hmm. Um... I mean, I had doctors over here telling me, you know, like, you had two seizures that day and blah, 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 whatever. I, I really never talked about this part online. So, here. You know, I had this over here and I had all these doctors saying this to me and um, I didn't remember any of it. And I had 
detectives calling me and asking me for stuff and having to go get medical records and having to go get this and having to go do that and all this kind of stuff. And I'm like, am I going to prison? I was terrified. I was fucking terrified. You know, and I have people saying things to me. I'm getting DMs at the time that people are saying to me, um, you know, like, oh, you just conveniently came out and made a statement on Twitter after the police investigation was released. Yeah, I had the police detectives telling me not to post anything on social media. I had my attorneys telling me not to post anything on social media. The day that I called the detective, because I got out of the hospital and they called my husband, and so I had to call the detective, the detective said, you need to retain an attorney. I'm just telling you that right now. I was like, what, I, what did I just wake up to? When I talked to the victim's mother on the phone, she was asking me questions because she said they didn't know anything about the investigation. I didn't really know a whole lot about it either except for what I was going through. So then to have people weaponize that against me, right? When there are medical records, okay? There is irrefutable evidence that I have never spoken about that people do not know that the police have, there is irrefutable evidence that is the reason why the police found that it is um, a medical emergency and that I had a, can't believe I've gone two hours. I actually brought out another battery because I didn't know how long I would go. There is irrefutable evidence, okay? Period, end of story. So that, and it is also a public record that they have come out, the Fisher's Police Department, look it up, and said that it was a medical emergency. And I have at that time and afterwards and up to this day, people saying that it was distracted driving. You know, when people say this, when people say that and whatever, right? And I'm like, that is not what happened at all. And you know that. And you want to say I'm a liar because of all these other things, but you're literally lying to paint a picture when there's a little police investigation for me. And then you have the nerve to want to come over here and tell people to stand up for myself. You're part of that group. I don't know if that's you or not, but you're part of that group. And you have the nerve to come over on my vlog, on my front door, okay? Literally. And tell people to stand up for themselves to me because I'm standing up to people that are spreading misinformation about me, but I'm not allowed to stand up for myself, right? And it goes back to that. Just avoid them, just give up to negative. What would you do if somebody was saying things about you? At the worst moment in your life, when you're healing, okay, you have a brain bleed, you have neurosurgeons telling you that they're gonna have to drill holes in your brain, that they don't know that you're gonna make it, okay? That the brain bleed may get worse, that there's a million medical complications from a brain bleed. You're, you're in a back brace. You're sitting in a chair. You're being told you can't post anything on social media and people are asking you why you're not posting on social media. Okay? And on top of that, people then are coming for you and when you are putting out small updates because you don't want people to worry about you, then you're getting DMs from people, yes, I have them saved, that are saying, oh, how convenient for you. The same people that later were on my vlog leaving nice comments thinking I didn't know who they were. Oh, how convenient that you finally came out with a statement. Oh, hell yeah, I'm pissed off. Why wouldn't I be? And then those people conveniently know what days I'm going to doctor's appointments. And I show up and they go, oh, somebody already checked in for you. Oh, your sister called ahead. You, of course. It freaks me out. You guys have no links that it, I, uh, that it went to. But the best that I felt, and felt in the seven years that I have been online was when I just wasn't paying it a lot of attention. And if I saw it, I just let it go and kept on moving. You know? And if they hated me, they hated me. And if they don't, and you love me, you love me. Or if you kind of like me, or you just enjoy watching me, whatever. And just ignoring it, you know? I got very good in junior high and high school to ignoring the bullying. And in many days, I'd walk in and just didn't even realize, feel like it, but didn't even realize it was going on, you know? And maybe that's where I need to get back to. It obviously is. Because I can't continue to talk about this. I just can't. It's not fun for me, and I know it's not enjoyable for you, right? Um, 
I can't control it. I can't control what people are going to say and do about me. I know. You're, you guys are 100% right. And when I say you, I mean the 99.9% .9 of you that are like, Peter, you're giving them what they want. I, I know I am. I know that. This battery is dying. So I guess I just have to ignore it the best that I can. Let me just stop this battery real quick. Hold on. Good thing I brought out another battery because uh, I knew it was going to die. I was like, I'll talk forever. By the way, I forgot to tell you guys, they had two flavored coffees today. Blueberry crumble and snickerdoodle. Does anybody want to guess which one I got? It's snickerdoodle because I always have blueberry crumble. And I have like two boxes inside that Joanne gave me. By the way, I am down to very minimal K-Pods. I'm very excited. I've been using most of it. So anyway, like I was saying, I don't know the, the answer to it, you know? When I used to go to schools and talk about bullying campaigns, anti-bullying campaigns based on my own experience, which I did do, um, you know, we would do this exercise where we would have the bully talk to the bully person and they would talk to each other about what was going on. Because I had learned that in talking to my bully, that to walk around in their shoes, right? But none of the people that hate me want to have an adult conversation with me. They want to hide behind a fictitious name or just make fun of me for whatever. And they don't want to take responsibility for their part or look at what their part is in it, you know, or any of that kind of stuff. Whatever. It's just finger pointing and blame and whatever. I can't do anything with that. I don't know what to do with that. You know, I think I've made it pretty clear I'm willing to change things about myself. I'm not willing to change for haters. I'm just not. And at this point, I'm not even really willing to change for lovers. It's too late in the game for me. I'm 51 years old, I'm gonna do what makes me happy, okay? But I will tell you what makes me not happy, and I know what makes you not happy is for me to continue to address this. The reason why I came on here today to talk about it was because I do not want anybody to be afraid um, of leaving a comment on my channel out of fear that you're gonna get blocked, all right? Like I said, it takes a lot to get blocked on my channel, and before I ever do, I go in and I look. And I have to have factual evidence, okay, that I know is you saying horrific things about me other places. Not just an opinion, but horrific things about me. Just to make that clear. Okay, so I don't want anybody to feel unsafe leaving comments over here. That is the reason why I wanted to make this video today. Number two, I want to address it once and for all. Tomorrow when I come back on here, okay, this is my goal. It is Oscar night. It is Academy at night. I was walking Boo Radley outside earlier tonight, and there were these, um, these hawks overhead. And I don't know if you guys know this, but hawks are a... Um, sign of the veil between the living and the dead. And I thought it was so weird that I was talking about all this today and thinking about my mom last night and, you know, my childhood dog passing away and reading the journal and then my birth certificate and then it's Academy Award night and then these hawks are flying over. Not just one, but several, right? I'm like, oh my God, this is so weird. Um, I gotta leave the dead behind. And I'm not talking about my mom. I'm talking about the negativity and the things that are dragging me down, right? Like, I gotta chop it off and be done. When I come back tomorrow, like, I'm vlogging today, and then I'm going to take a nap and maybe watch some of the Academy Awards tonight, maybe watch some true crime, maybe take a walk. It's a little cold for that, but we'll see. You know, just, I, mean, I want to have a really nice, relaxing night, and then when I come back tomorrow, I'm ready to come back and have some fun. Like, I miss it, right? Like, I cannot get bogged down by all this anymore. I'm done talking about it. Um, and so, I will just say this. There's two or three people out there. I think they're pretty aware. If you're sitting there and you're like, is he talking about me? I'm not talking about you, okay? Just so you know. <laughs> There's two or three people out there because I've given them hints that directly allude right to them that know that I've been watching them for a while because they're leaving really like not nice things about me other places. The next comment, I'm probably just gonna block you. And then we'll just move on. Um, if I see something that is an opinion or sharing a belief about something that doesn't align with mine, feel free to leave that. I don't care. If you paint an, un an, an untrue story about me, you come over here and you say something that's not true, I'm going to delete the comment. If it happens more than once, I'll probably block it. That's just what we'll do going forward. I won't be talking about it again in any more videos. I, I hope. I won't be addressing it anymore. I need to get back to having fun. Okay? This is way too stressful for me. 
this is just way too much for me. I just can't. It's just, it's a lot, you know? Um, and for all of you guys out there that today that I woke up to your comments and you were like, Peter, like, you share what you need to share. This is your vlog. I just want to say I really, really appreciate that. Like, that really meant a lot to me. And for those people out there that also brought up that they were unsure of things or they felt uncomfortable, I want to say I appreciate your comments as well because it made me think about how I was presenting myself. Um, you know... I have to be able to get on this vlog every single day and just share what I want to share. And if what I share on here upsets some people and brings joy to other people, that's just going to be the nature of this vlog. Um, it is just what it is. I, I, I cannot get in the weeds and try to think about what I'm saying to appease people that are watching the vlog. Ever since day one on this vlog, I've just shared what I need to share. Some people like it, some people don't. Some people like me, some people don't. Some people love me, some people hate me. I'm some people's cup of tea, I'm some people's not. <laughs> or whatever the say, you know? I mean, that's just how it's gonna be. I've always known that, you know? And I read that quote, not a meme, the other day that said, um, you don't have, uh, not everybody has to like you and you don't have to care. And I love that quote, right? I'm doing my best to get there. I'm doing my best. Um, I hope that this year, I hope 2024 for me is the year of stepping into my own and being confident and being present and just enjoying the life that I was given, the gift that I was given of life, um, that I am so grateful for and that I can step into it and enjoy it. And those people that don't like me, fuck off. I don't know. <laughs> you know, that's where I'm at with it. I hope I get there. And I hope I get there quickly. Because I need to. You know? It's like... I did the video on my drama channel. It's not like I'm catching up. I'm trying to, like, run to catch up with my words, if that makes sense. Like, I, I can see it in my head, and I like those things. But I'm still working on it. And I'm doing my best. And maybe all this the last couple days over here on this channel needed to happen for me to make me realize, well, maybe you're not exactly there yet. You have a little bit more work to do. So I'm thankful for this. Um, you know, everything for me is a learning experience to remain teachable. Like I said, that has been thrown in my face and I've made fun, been made fun of for saying that. But it's the truth, right? I think the only people that probably have an issue with me saying remain teachable are the people that aren't. So anyway, um... Thank you guys for listening. Happy Sunday. Um, if nobody else, I hope you are having a magically amazing Sunday. And if nobody else has told you this today, I love you. Even you haters out there, get some love for you out there. And um, no, but in, sincere, in all sincerity, you know, I think that's the hardest thing for me is that like, I try to really understand where somebody's coming from it and like, I think one of the hardest things for me was, and I don't really look this deep into it anymore, but back when I was looking into it and I was like seeing like people, you know, I was being sent like the information, the social media of the people that were behind like a lot of the stalking and the hating. And I'm seeing these people that I didn't, it didn't make sense to me. Like, they have seemingly happy lives, but obviously underneath all that, it's like I can remember my mom, like those Christmas cards you get where everybody's in matching sweaters. And my mom be like, those lies are such, those pictures are such a lie and facade, right? Like, but it's like, I see these people's pictures and I'm like, you know, some of them, it made sense. Like, you know, some of them had lost kids and some of them had been dealing with medical issues. And so I understood it, you know, it was like, okay, well, I understand that you've got a lot of sadness in your life. Maybe this is how you deal with it. I don't know. You know, it's like when Oprah said years and years and years ago, you know, that she went to that, uh, the Illinois state prison with the women that had killed their children. And after she filmed the show, the woman said, the one woman said to her, why don't you hate us? And Oprah looked at her and she said, I don't no, I don't hate you. Because, see, that's what you do with your pain. I do something different with mine. And that's always resonated with me. And I think that's why it is so hard for me to block the people that don't like me. Because I'm, like, so trying to understand what it is. Like, I don't need to be liked by everybody. I don't need to be validated by everybody. But it, the understanding would make more sense to me, right? Because that's not what I do with my pain. I don't lash out at people and talk shit about them behind their backs. If I have something to say, I'll say it to your face. True story, I got a drama channel, okay? But that's not even hate. That's just my opinion about things. People misunderstand that because of their love for the people that I talk about. I don't hate any of those people. I don't even have an emotional attachment to those people. 
But if I have a real issue with somebody in my life, I take it to them, you know? But what do I do with my pain? I eat my pain, you know? Back in the day, I used drugs and alcohol. That's what I found out in my journal last night. It was blaringly obvious to me. I already knew that, you know? So I love that statement when she looks at them and she goes, no, I don't hate you. Because that's what you do with your pain, but I do something different with mine. So people do what their pain is. They target it towards me and their anger and their hatred and their sadness and towards me and they take it out of me. But that's not what I do with it. And that's why I can't make sense of it. It doesn't make any sense of it, sense to me. But I don't want to live in that anymore. I can't. It's not healthy for me. And I know it's not enjoyable for other people. So when I put my head down on the pillow tonight and I get up tomorrow, then tomorrow um, we'll start having some fun again because I miss it. And uh, so, yeah. Anyway, I hope that you guys are having a magically amazing Sunday and getting relaxed, rejuvenated, refreshed, and renewed for the week ahead. And if nobody else told you this today, I love you. We got a short outro. Have fun tonight. Watch some true crime. Listen to a book. Take a walk. Watch the Academy Awards. Take a nap. Watch a sci-fi or a scary movie. I don't know. Do something that makes you happy. And I love you guys so much. Thank you for listening to my TED Talk today. <laughs> Hopefully this will be the last time and um, I will see you tomorrow. Bye. Love you.